Hi folks, welcome to Mad PD and my session, Your Critical Friend is Now a Bot. If you have any questions as we go through the this presentation, feel free to tweet out at SIG225, either during the presentation uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on May the 2nd, or any time in the near or foreseeable future, as that's where you'll always find me. So this, the, the, the role I have here is to sort of present to you PowerPoint Coach. And what PowerPoint Coach does is use AI to give you feedback on your presentation and your presentation skills. So it's like having a critical friend watching you do your presentation. The nice thing is that it's free and accessible on any web device. You visit office.com and click on PowerPoint. Now I know as soon as someone says or sees Microsoft, half the people get up and leave because they think I'm a Google school. I can't use Microsoft tools. Wrong. You can use any Microsoft tool um, that's available online for free by making your Gmail or any other school account into a Microsoft account. It's all free. It's all easy. You literally go to the account.microsoft.com website. You click on create a Microsoft account. You throw in your email address that you always have used. And as soon as you do that, they add a layer of Microsoftness to that email account. Don't worry, Facebook won't know you've attached Microsoft to your email account, but it gives you access to all of online Microsoft Office, including PowerPoint Online, which comes with PowerPoint Coach, which is what I'm using right now. You can sort of see the little window in the lower right-hand corner that's been popping up the comments as I go through this. So how does it all work? Well, it involves AI. When you go to PowerPoint and you load up your presentation, you click on slideshow or, or view and click on rehearse with coach. And it goes through and it analyzes everything that you say or do in your presentation. Now this is a, lar a small part of a larger process within uh, Microsoft. Everything in Microsoft now has this layer of AI built behind it. When you're in Word, it goes through your documents and suggests rewrites. It doesn't just do grammar and spelling checking. It actually says you could rephrase this in a way that would be more understandable. In Excel, the simplest example is taking pictures of tables and it automatically becoming a, an Excel document. Beyond that, there's all the textual analysis and Power BI stuff that's going on that's really far too complicated to talk about. In OneNote, when you write an equation in ink, it understands it as math and then interprets it, solves it, and gives you this written out solution, or in this case, graphing with parameters. In video production, in stream, when you do a presentation, it knows who's talking and when they're talking and be able to analyze that and give you the graph as well. And lastly, it knows about accessibility. And in every single one of the Microsoft Office programs, you can ask it to check for accessibility across a wide range of characteristics. The nice thing that Microsoft has done in the last five, six years is that every product that goes through Microsoft gets last checked by the accessibility office to make sure all the standards have been met. And that's one nice guarantee you have with Microsoft products that they are eminently accessible by as many users as possible. And when you're creating documentation, when you're creating content, you can access that accessibility um, AI as well. Okay, let's get into the, the coaching part. Well, don't worry, there'll be a test. I mean, I mean there'll be a summary at the end. You, it really does look at, at, at the pacing of your slides. Are you reading this too fast? Are you going through and people are gonna miss what you're trying to say? And if you're doing that, it will tell you to try speaking a little bit slower. It will give you that through the process of you going through your slides. And if you maybe read a little too slow, then it will likely give you feedback on that as well. As a math teacher, it will actually give you a graph at the end to show you your speed going through your slides. You may notice it also noticed that I was reading off of my slides. It is also understanding what you're saying and will it will look at your word usage and its appropriateness for a wide audience. 
And, uh, you know, it also looks at the words that maybe, um, really, uh, you know, don't really aren't necessary, eh? The first thing you want to make sure is when you open it up, oh, sorry, when you open it up, that you're using um, your microphone because it is it is listening to what you say and it will, it will remind you, you know uh, that should actually say Microsoft let me get rid of this scribble that um, <laughs> uh, it will will use your um, microphone and ask permission that you could actually get recorded um, it doesn't save the recording it just uses it for the analysis and then it dumps it but it will use oh God, um, I meant to say something oh crap um, this is this is this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you see, it does look at swearing and does remind people not to swear. Now, the problem I have as a teacher is that it will become a game to students to see how many times and what swear words it will or will not accept. And it's not just that obtuse of language. If I were to say, do a presentation to a bunch of policemen and firemen, it would then say, wait a minute, there's, <laughs> it's police officer and, fire, and firefighter. And it goes a little bit more than that. You can talk about the manpower um, department, and it will suggest that perhaps that's a different option. Um, disabled people might also think about, you know, that the disabled community is something that could likely be somewhat offensive. And I'm just waiting for it to pop up when it catches the word disabled, um, because it will suggest that perhaps... Um, Oh, see now saying I'm talking too slow as I'm trying to make sure that it's, it picks up disabled. Um, it doesn't catch absolutely everything, but it does certainly try. And as you saw, it picked up a great many things. Uh, it will, uh, and you know you guys, it will, it will, uh, and again, see you guys is something that you, you need to work on. So that's part of being the microphone because it is listening to you and trying to give you feedback on things you might want, not want to say. I do have a lot to say more about this. But I think the most important thing, and again, it's analyzing, it's giving you feedback, that you don't want to read things off the slide. You want to be able to just talk about what's on the slide without saying what's on the slide. And that's, again, part of the feedback that it's going to get. We're going to end up with the actual report. So let's go ahead to the end of the slide. Oh, look, blank slide. End of slide. And now the report. And let's just do a brief rundown of the report. It talks about how long it actually took us to do the presentation and showed us all the different filler words that I used. The nice thing about this is if a student or you as a, as a user wants to go in, you can click on learn more and it will go through all the different documentation that will allow you to sort of become um, a better speaker. And as you can see, there's a good many um, possibilities of things that you can improve on. Let's go back to the chart. Under originality, it pinpointed the two slides that I said most of the content on. Because often there are some slides you need to work on more than others. And the first and the last slides were mine. And so it gives you an opportunity to pinpoint exactly where you need to work on. In the pacing, now as a math mathematician, this is an average over all the slides. What will likely come in the future uh, is a better analysis of this graph here, where at some points I was slowing right down. You sort of see my slide, my rate down here is almost 100 words per minute, and my maximum is well over 150. So this is really just a preview, right? This is, this is the beginning of the whole AI uh, presentation coach. So edition number one. So the changes will keep coming fast and furious. So the pacing on average is pretty, pretty good, but I really do need to work on those particular slides where I need to do better. Talking way too slow here at the beginning, or sorry, here in this point, and, and way too fast here and here towards the end. This lead up as I was sort of playing around showing you where uh, presentation coach was, is usually always gonna be happening uh, as you start a presentation. It's now showing you pitch. Um, so I'm doing pretty good in terms of pitch. I'm not being monotonic, um, so that's nice. Um, and it's also something kids can work on. And again, if as a teacher, I know kids are going to be playing with this and they're going to try to make their voice as monotone as possible to try to get that always peering down here, which can be fun too, but not really the point of getting better. Um, sensitive phrases. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back and beep out the, the, the swear words, um, but it's going to catch them. Um, and the swear words, not so much, because again, the kids will, will love that. 
But the words that we maybe might not think of, um, the you guys one is something that I had I worked to get out of my phraseology, um, and words we might not be familiar with anymore, manpower. How often do we use the word manpower anymore? Um, but it does dig into some of those phrases that we may not uh, always be aware of. And I'm surprised it didn't show as disabled because it has showed me that before. And it's a word we really wouldn't use before. And there's other words um, that uh, uh, master, I guess, will, it will also catch because of the connotations there. And lastly, um, it is also trying to, as, as part of that whole word AI about phrasing, um, phrasing, all, phrasing of what you're saying in terms of, of what's actually on the slide. So it does try to dig into becoming both a better presenter and, you know, just a better writer. Okay, so that's presentation coach. There's one deficit here that I do need to mention is that as soon as you hit close or rehearse again, you lose this report. So what you might want to do is just do a quick screenshot. There we go. And then and then drop it on the last slide just so that you always have a copy or in the OneNote um, if you have if you use OneNote or some, Google Doc whatever you use. But just keep a copy of it so that the next time you go through it you can compare uh, what you did and how you improved because always reflection is something that you always want to work on. And I really wish they would add a way of putting this as a sort of the last slide um, each time so that you can sort of see how you're doing as you're improving. But that's uh, that's neither not my job. Okay, it is only available presently in the online version. If you happen to have desktop uh, PowerPoint, you can certainly use your online version at any time to, to use Rehearse with Coach. And it's something that, that uh, you'll find is a really interesting way to make sure your presentations improve. All right, any questions, any comments, it's at SIG225 uh, anytime, uh, day or night. Thanks very much, and it's good to talk to you all.